the gunman got his hands on that AR-style rifle that he used in the shooting. Back here at home in eastern Washington, firefighter is fighting for his life at Harborview Medical Center in Seattle this morning. Yeah, so the Okanagan County Emergency Management Department saying that Assistant Chief Christian Johnson with the county fire district there badly burned while battling the Spring Coulee Fire south of Okanagan over the weekend. Chief Johnson has second and third degree burns over more than half of his body, according to officials. Uh, so Brandy's here to speak with us about this with more on what we know so far. This is heartbreaking. Yeah, heartbreaking news and really just coming in this morning where we're starting to understand the extent uh, of what has happened here. As of this morning, Harborview Medical Center confirming for us that Assistant Chief Christian Johnson is in critical condition there. Yesterday, the emergency management department in Okanagan said he was in a medically induced coma. Uh, they were waiting for him to be able to be stabilized before he could attempt. They could attempt skin grafts. So we're waiting to hear more from Harborview Medical Center on that. But in the meantime, uh, Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz joins us live on the phone this morning to discuss this. Commissioner, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, have you been um, updated or kept up to date on um, Assistant Chief Johnson's condition? I have. I mean, what we have right now is largely what you just reported, that on Sunday, Assistant Chief Christian Johnson with the Okanagan County Fire District was severely burned while fighting the Spring Coulee Fire, and he was immediately airlifted to Harborview and put into medically induced coma and has second and third degree burns over 60% of his body, and his airway has been damaged. And they are currently um, attempting to stabilize him so that skin graft surgery can be performed. Um, that's what we have of uh, information to date, and we are constantly working to get as much information as possible and holding him and his family definitely in our thoughts and prayers. Yeah, uh, unimaginable. Do you have any information, Commissioner, on what happened here? From our understanding, uh, this fire, and again, we'll show you the map of, of where this happened, just south of Okanagan, uh, it burned about 142 acres, but it was brought under control fairly quickly. So do we know uh, what happened in this case or what led uh, to these severe injuries? We don't have all the information. At this point, we are um, conducting the full investigation of this incident to determine what happened, what went wrong. Um, we always want to put firefighter safety first, and an injury like this is something we strive to avoid at all costs. So we will be conducting a full investigation of this incident, but we do not have all details yet. Uh, let me just ask you, you know, from, from your experience in this job, we know that fighting wildfires is dangerous. We had, uh, back in 2015, the Twist River Fire, three firefighters killed, a fourth, Daniel Lyon, who was injured, who you've uh, met with personally, who you've been, been close with. We know how hard his recovery uh, has been for him. For you and your position, um, what is it like when, when an incident like this happens? This is heart-wrenching. I will just say, I mean, uh, every one of our firefighters in our state is part of our team. Um, I think about this constantly as the fact that our firefighters put their lives at risk every single time they go out on the fire lines. And many of these firefighters are the age of my eldest son, 20 years old. Um, they're putting themselves in difficult, challenging conditions where the wind and the fire are volatile and unpredictable, and it can create very dangerous, life-threatening uh, for our firefighters, as seen by this. Um, I will say last year, when we had a significant number of fires, 1,850, we had a number of burnovers where trucks were taken over, and every one of those incidents, I hold my breath, the people on my team hold my breath, just hold, hoping and praying that everyone's going to be okay. Um, I think this is a situation of being a reminder of how hard and dangerous the job is and how we can never, ever take for granted uh, that our firefighters are putting their lives on the line to protect our communities every single day. Yeah, and, you know, to something that you and I have talked about many times uh, on this program, you know, obviously the fewer wildfires that we have, the less danger there is uh, to individuals because they don't have to go out to those fire lines as much. Uh, what are we doing in this state to try to combat the number of intense fires that we've had? Again, there's one is obviously prevention. Uh, we have to remember that 90% of our fires are caused by humans, and so every single person in Washington State can do something to prevent these fires starting in the first place. Second is that context, obviously, of making sure we're restoring the health of our forests so that we don't have these volatile fires where they get intense heat, intense uh, danger, and intense damage. And, and, and then also is the context of having the resources on the ground. One, training, 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 have critical, sufficient training for local, state, and federal 
firefighters. It's something we have been taking very seriously, learning from the 2015 twist tragedy of increasing the amount of training we offer and offering it to all of our firefighters, no matter whether they're working for the local, state, or federal agencies and also having the critical fire resources from the critical trucks to our obviously our air assets that we use on initial attack that are absolutely critical and being able to quickly get on top of the fires and contain it so we yeah. can keep our firefighters safe. Yeah, and I'll just reiterate a point you made there at the beginning that's so important. The vast majority of our fires caused by humans and you know we we we're obviously the cause of this fire is the spring coulee fire still being investigated we still have a lot of information we don't know uh, but that's so important for people watching to keep in mind um, what can happen when these fires break out commissioner of public lands hillary franz we appreciate you joining us this morning and giving us that update thank you please keep christian and his family